Good morning, Christian Baldwin here with Black Diamond Mergers and Acquisitions. Today I want to revisit the basics and this video is primarily for the business owner that is not really sure when the right time is to start thinking about an exit strategy or even really how to go about the process of trying to find someone to take over their business and maintain the legacy that they've created. There are a lot of different details that have to be thought through and really if it's a company that you've owned for a long time and you've built it up, it's almost like a family member in and of itself. And so there's an emotional side to it because you want to make sure that whoever takes your business over treats your customers and employees just how you would treat them. And you want to make sure that you leave the business in good hands. There are a number of different ways that you can go about it. You can think about selling it to a family member or maybe to your employees through a, a, a stock purchase plan or what's called an ESOP. Or you could go to the market and look for a strategic buyer or maybe a financial buyer. A strategic buyer is one where it's going to be possibly a little bit larger company or somebody that's already in the industry that wants to grow by acquisition. Financial partner could be a private equity group or a family office, someone that's looking more for a return on their investment to add to their portfolio and then make a good return on their exit down the road at some point in the future. Now, you don't have to sell all of your business all on day one all at the same time. So this is a, a common misconception for the business owner uh, that's not familiar with M&A activity. You can sell part of your business today. You can retain some stock in it or membership units, whatever the case may be. And you can have a, what's called a lot of times, a quote, second bite of the apple, if you will, where you retain maybe some form of ownership. And when the company is sold after you, you can cash out again in, in, you know, in the end. And in the interim, you might choose to be involved from an advisor capacity or not involved at all. Um, it's really up to you and your objectives as the current owner as to how much your involvement might be after you sell. Now, of course, you can sell all at once, um, but you don't have to. And there's some tax advantages maybe for going one way or the other that you would want to consult with your, your deal team about. When you sell, there's usually three forms of consideration that are the main types. One, of course, is cash. Right, I want to sell my business for you know $20 million and just write me a check and then I'm going to go on my merry way. Uh, the second form of consideration is an uh, owner's note. So uh, owner financing or partial owner financing can be attractive if you get um, a good rate on it and it's, it's collateralized correctly just as if you were the bank doing part of the deal. Uh, some business owners don't really want to do that up front, but honestly, the more that they know about how these instruments work and if they're done correctly, then it can be a good, it can be actually a very good thing. You can end up making more money on the interest income um, than you would otherwise have. And there can be some tax advantages there as well. The third form of consideration is what's called an earnout, and that basically says, hey, I'm going to pay you as the current owner a portion of the sales price if and only if the business meets certain financial metrics in the future. Uh, these have to be really clearly defined. Um, our opinion of them is uh, you want them to, to be measured as close to the top line as possible, uh, i.e. gross revenue, and they have to be um, documented so that you can easily audit them uh, post-close. So there's some nuances there, but they can work well and they can bridge the gap in terms of negotiation. Uh, no matter what, if you're a business owner and you're thinking about having those types of conversations and trying to figure out how to go about finding the right buyer and, and how to getting your maximum value out of your business, you want to make sure you have a good advising team, which includes uh, a, a mergers and acquisitions advisor, uh, of course your accountant who's familiar with your business, and a deal attorney. So if you need help in any of those areas uh, and you need a, a good M&A advisor, that's, how we're, that's what we're here to do and to help. And we look forward to uh, having those conversations with many more business owners in the future. Thanks a lot, everybody. Take care.